Hey, how's everybody doing out there? This is me again, and I've been a while since I made a video. Been wanting to make a video for, I don't know, a month or whatever, so it's I guess it's just time now. And uh, there's some things that I want to talk about, and one of them is uh, there's a, a lot of... Uh, Bible is being taught and it's uh, being taught and preached on and I'm talking over the years many years is being taught and preached on and it's taken out of context which means that the author of the scriptures that they're teaching on uh, had a certain thing in his mind when he wrote that Paul like for example Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 had in his mind uh, what in his mind he was thinking of something you know other than what these people have been teaching on and I'm gonna go ahead and read it and um, because this is kind of not very good to be teaching this stuff this this is Second Corinthians chapter 10. And this is the, uh, the Power of New Testament here. This is pretty good. <clears throat> out of, uh, it's one of my Bibles out of my collection of a uh, hundred some odd Bibles, translations that I have, and commentaries. Uh, uh, I, Paul, urge you through the gentleness and humility of the Messiah, I indeed in person am humble among you, but when I am absent, I am bold before you. I beg, and I beg that when I am not present to be bold with confidence, which I consider to be courageous towards some who consider us as walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not serving as soldiers according to the flesh. For our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but powerful in God for the tearing down of strongholds, tearing down reasonings, every high thing that high thing being lifted up against the knowledge of God and taking captivity, every thought in obedience to Messiah and being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience would be achieved. Now, I just went along with all this, you know, stuff for years and it's because it sounds good. Uh, they say they've been teaching to, uh, to, uh, uh, tear down the strongholds in your mind. Okay, fine. We have problems with thinking. I've been having problems with my thoughts, you know, having control of them and it's negativity, wrong, wrong thoughts, you know, not like I want to go rob a bank or something, but just, you know, negative things and anger and resentment, et cetera, whatever. And so, oh, this is a stronghold. So I got to tear it down. Let me see. I got to, I got to take the weapons of the warfare and I got to tear these strongholds down that are in my mind. Okay. And every high thing, casting down, I have to cast down these high reasonings and blah, blah, blah within my mind. Okay, so how do you go about doing that? Well, there's a problem here, okay? Now, I'm going to read what Adams Clark says concerning this passage of Scripture. This is uh, Adams Clark commentary. He says right here, um, verse 16, but, but thanks be to God. He thanks God who had already disposed the heart of Tim, Tid, Tidimus, Titus to, uh, whatever, Titus, uh, to attend to his business. And with the usual address, considers all that is done on behalf of the Corinthian church. And it has some references here. Are not carnal. Here he refers to the means used by the false false apostles in order to secure his party oh well he's talking about false apostles here he's not talking about my thoughts or your thoughts he's talking about false apostles 
okay? But mighty through God, our doctrines are true and pure. They come from God and lead to Him, and He accompanies them with His mighty power to the hearts of those who hear them. And the strongholds, the apparently solid and cogent, cogent reasonings of the philosophers, we, by these doctrines, pull down. Now, he's talking about the strongholds of philosophy over this particular group of people that he sent this letter to. They're the Corinthians. Okay, and then next, verse 5. Casting down imaginations, reasonings, or opinions, the Greek philosophers valued themselves, especially on their ethic systems, in which their reasonings appeared to be very profound and conclusive, but they were obliged to assume principles which were either such as did not exist or were false in themselves. Every high thing, even the pretendedly sublime doctrines, for instance, of Plato, Aristotle, the Stoics in general, fell before the simple preaching of Christ crucified, the knowledge of God, the doctrine of unity, an eternity of the divine nature which was opposed by the plurality of their idols and the generation of their gods and their man-made deities. The obedience of Christ's subjection to idols was annihilated by the progress of the gospel among the heathen. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, I am ready though this mighty armor of God to punish those opposers of the doctrine of Christ and the disobedience which has been produced by them when your obedience is fulfilled. If you ask me, there's a big difference between that and casting down the mind, the thoughts in your own mind there. And my question is, why, why has this been taught that we have strongholds in our minds? That's false teaching. There's no such thing as a stronghold in our mind. Nowhere does it say that, except for there, and that's taken out of context. So, my suggestion is to you and everybody else there, out there that's listening to this, is come to understand that you, the only like strongholds you got is false teachings that, of people or whoever, whatever, that are telling you that you've got to do something to maintain and have unity with God. Be one with God. There is, you are already one with God because Christ came down into humanity, into us, and became us so that we could be Him. So that we could have unity with God throughout eternity. He did everything. He came into the flesh, into a physical body, was crucified as us, died we died with him he died as us and with him and was resurrected we also were resurrected with him and uh there's nothing that can separate us from god nothing read your bible it says that in there nothing can separate us from god you don't have to go pursuing god you don't have to cast the only thing you have to do is change the way you think about your condition, your who you are, you know, your what you are. Like the Bible says that we are new creatures in Christ. We are new creations in Christ. So you just have to change the way you think through a uh, whatever type of uh, you have to do meditation or whatever you want to call it. You need to do that to. Just change the way you think. Stop thinking that you have to achieve oneness with God by something other than Christ and Him crucified. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Is It's really that simple. So, I don't believe in this stronghold stuff that these people have been feeding us for all these years. I'm sorry, but I'm not buying it anymore. See ya!